Hey guys, thanks so much for watching my channel. My name is Veronica Ray. You can call me V. And today's video is all about a holiday look. I was really inspired to use kind of jewel tones, emerald green colors. I wanted to do a green eyeshadow and I felt compelled to do this. And I mean, what better time of the year to wear an emerald green eyeshadow than the holidays. It's gonna be all about like a holiday glam, festive um, kind of look. So if you wanna learn how to get this look, continue watching. So the first thing that I'm going to do after my skincare, of course, is to prime the face. To prime the face, I'm actually mixing up two different products together. My good old favorite Smashbox Photo Finish and MAC Strobe Cream in Gold Light. I love this product. You can mix it into anything if you want that really nice natural glow. And they come in different undertones. So this is a really great product. I just mix it together and then I just apply it to my face. Because this look is very eye focused, I'm gonna start with the eyes just in case there's any fallout. I'm dealing with a lot of glitters and dark colors. So I like to start with the eyes first when it comes to like a very heavy, dramatic eye. So the first thing that I wanna do when I start my eyeshadow is use a primer so that it can have something to really stick to. And once it dries, it's really gonna help hold the eyeshadow and make it look fresh throughout the day. The eyeshadow primer that I'm going to be using is the Lorac Behind the Scenes Eye Primer. I find this one's really good as just a nice base for any eyeshadow. So I'm just going to take like a very thin layer and apply it all over the eyelid. Make sure to set the eyelid primer with an eyeshadow um, in your skin tone or you can go a little bit lighter um, just to kind of create a highlight under your brow. So with a large eyeshadow brush, um, today I'm using Ashiwamura 150 I think and I'm just kind of taking the color sand from this Tarte palette and evening out my eyelid. You don't want to put too much on, but you want enough where it's just a nice even tone. So now that that's done, you have like a really good blank eye for any color that you want to put on top. So after you base your eye, you want to use a good transitional color because the color that I'm going to be using today is very pigmented. It's a very like strong green color. I want to have some kind of a transitional shade to go from that dark deep color into my skin. So a really good way to do that would be to take like a nice like medium brown. I'm actually going back into that color from Tarte and I'm using um, a bronzer called Terracotta that is found in that same palette. So I'm taking a blending brush from Pat McGrath to kind of just really get in there. I like the density of this brush because it gives like a nice um, application without over blending it. You still have like good control over it. So I'm kind of placing this color right into the socket. So right underneath my brow bone right here. This is the socket and this is my eyelid. Um, generally a lot of people like to just you know, they have really big eyelids, but because I have really kind of small eyelids, but of a lot of space, you have to use your bone structure. Really, you're just, you're, you're setting up the structure of your eye at this point. So you don't want to like look straight ahead and then do your eyes because it really closes up your eye. What you want to do is like you want to kind of look down and by doing this, you're opening up your entire eye area and you can see the placement and where to put the color. It's kind of like really emphasizing that crease. And I even go like here, I go like into that little socket underneath the brow going into the nose, but I kind of make it darker here. So I want to go dark and I kind of like fade into my nose. So I'm working with like a really dark color like this. You want to like really build up. You want to go from the lightest color up to the darkest color when you're dealing with dark colors is not to go right for it right away. You want to really build up to that color because if you do, if you do mess up, it's a lot easier for you to fix it if you're dealing with the lighter colors than if I just did like a really dramatic green eye. I want to be using a Morphe 35U palette and I'll be using this green right there. So I'm moving into more of a tapered brush. So this is a very green color. And I'm just going to go right underneath that bronzer. 
that bronzy color. At this point I'm kind of like, like kind of cutting my crease. If you feel like you've put too much, you could always go back in with the bronzer and kind of diffuse the color and soften those edges. But what I'm really doing right now, I'm really trying to create the transition. I'm gonna do at this point, it looks a little crazy right now, but I really just wanna get like the, the transitional colors down first before I go into the main colors. So I just kinda of wanna make sure they're somewhat even. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna take this um, By Terry Ombre Black Star in the color number 10 midnight forest i love these these are like the best stick eyeshadows they're like really great basis for like powder eyeshadows and they just make everything pop and look super intense you could totally wear them by themselves so this color is like a really beautiful like forest green and they're so creamy and so easy to blend so this is a really dark color so i'm gonna take this color and put it right over my eyelid like the entire eyelid okay I'm gonna take a 217 MAC brush and then I'm gonna blend the edges of that cream. I'm gonna kind of switch back and forth from a blending brush to like a pointed synthetic brush so I can kind of blend in the inner corners and get really close to that lash line. So what I'm doing here, you can see it's like kind of gradating. It's going from like dark to light and into your skin. These shadow sticks are so easy to blend. They're so creamy. And the cool thing is that once they're like dried, they're super waterproof. When you're doing looks like this that are like really intense and dramatic, blending, I know it sounds overrated, but blending is key. It's okay if it's a little messy at first. You just want to make sure the gradation is there. You can really see the colors like move from dark to light because of that um, eyeshadow stick um, it has like a nice creamy texture so what I'm going to do is take the star color which is like one of my favorite colors so I'm taking my Natasha Denona palette and then I'm using the color 85p Panija and to apply this color I'm actually going to use my finger so I'm going to pick up the eyeshadow with my finger like this, and I'm literally gonna press it right on top. I'm going to take this black eyeliner from Urban Decay in Perversion, and I'm going to smoke out the bottom waterline. So a good trick, like a, like a foolproof way to have like a very easy smoky eye is to take a really nice blendy gel pencil liner like this then go into like a small pencil brush so i'm going to use a 223 i think brush from um, mac as well i'm just going to go into a dark green color i don't know what color this is but I think it's a MAC Pro color. It's in one of my Z palettes, but it's this color right here. Wait, this color right here. So it's like a matte green. You can do this with whatever color you want, but just while that liner is on, just take the color of your choice and just run it across. And just kind of, while you're running it across, kind of buff it in, and it kind of like smokes everything out. And that black is going to make that color look like the darker version of itself. So if you had brown, it would look like dark brown. Because we're mixing it, right? And just to make it really even, I just kind of go in again. See, this is the beauty of like doing a dark eye first. Because you can like really go in and buff things out. And not worry, have to worry about like makeup falling onto your perfectly blended foundation. I'm gonna actually go into this brush, which is a NARS brush, an old NARS brush. I don't know if they still have this brush. But I'm just gonna, because it's bigger, I think it's gonna do a better job at blending. The bottom, because I'm gonna bring it down further. 
You see? You really want to blend that. And that's okay. Like, everything's fine right now. I mean, you might feel like you have a black eye. <laughs> but once you clean, go in and clean everything, it should be fine. I'm kind of like winging it out, too. Like, I'm kind of extending it a little bit. I go back into my 224 brush. I'm going to go into that dark green matte color. And I'm just going to pop the outer corner just to kind of intensify it a little bit more. And if you feel like you ever, like you overstep your boundary like I just did, just kind of go in with that bronzy color. I kind of don't touch this, but like, like this is the, br the brush that I used for that bronze color. I don't mix it, I kind of keep it on the side. So if I overdo anything, I can always just kind of go in and buff out anything that I went overboard with. So after I go in with that dark matte green color, I'm going to go in with my um, small NARS brush and I'm going into a black matte. I'm using my palette from Smashbox. I'm, as you can see, it's well loved, but I'm using this guy here. So with the black, I just kind of want to lightly touch like the outer corner. What you want to do is take the small brush to kind of place it, and then I go in with a bigger 224 brush to buff it out. I'm going to go in the inner corner too, like right here. So I'm going to do like my first wipe. <laughs> Sometimes I like wipe more than once to take off like and really shape the bottom because right now it's kind of messy. So right here I'm just, I'm just gonna like really create the shape. So I'm kind of like winging everything. Already that looks so much better. To kind of make it more detailed, use your Q-tip. This is where you really start to refine everything. So I'm going to go back into that kind of bronzer color and I'm going to add a little bit more. I want to like kind of create depth in the inner socket. Okay, so we're going to like press pause on the eyes and then start doing the face. And then I'm just going to kind of go in when I've done everything to really um, kind of make it pop a little bit more. So I'm actually going to take a little bit more of that primer and put a little under my eyes because I wiped it off. So for foundation, I'm actually going to be using Wet n Wild. This foundation is so, so, so good. I love it so much. It's, if you haven't tried this foundation, you're missing out. It's like $5 and it lasts all day. It coverage is amazing. It just looks so good on the skin. I'm using the color Desert Beige. I'm going to be using my Real Technique sponge. And it has a spatula built into it. So you can like totally just like swatch your face like that. <laughs> just get it on there. Look at that. Look how good this foundation is. It's better than some like $50 foundations out there. So after the foundation, I'm gonna pop on some concealer. I'm using Tarte Shape Tape in medium. I kind of put the concealer like on the sides of my nose too, like right here, because I feel like it kind of makes my, like shapes my nose a little bit better. Now I'm just going to take, I like this buffing brush to get really close to my shadow. I'm taking like a clean, this is a Trish McAvoy brush. I don't know what it's called, but it's like, see how pointy and, and small it is, but it's not too small. I'm actually taking a clean one and just running it across where the shadow and like the concealer meet. 
to kind of diffuse the line. So I'm kind of like blending those two together without mixing them together, you know? Because you still you want it to look really clean. But you also don't want it to look like a sharp line either. You want it to have some kind of diffusion. But see, I'm always kind of pulling it up because I want it to like I want it to like look winged out. Now that everything is blended, I think the highlight is still a little intense, but once I put powder and set everything, it's going to look really cohesive. And don't forget to like get the little crevices on the, around the nose. I hate when makeup like gets caught right here, or like there's like a, there's like a space where the makeup didn't hit. I hate that. I look very scary right now. I look very ghoulish. Don't worry, I'll make it glam in 2.3 seconds. Okay, so now I'm gonna set everything with powder. So I'm taking my Ben Nye Neutral Set, and I'm just gonna like take a little bit of this powder and the sponge and just set under the eye. So I know a lot of people out there, especially all of you makeup artists, have mixed thoughts when it comes to using excess amounts of powder and baking. But um, I really think it's dependent on what you're doing. Obviously, if you're trying to do a dewy look for an editorial, it's going to be completely different. But for me, this is what I have to do for my makeup to really stay on the entire day. Oop. There goes my sponge. So while that's kind of baking a little bit, I'm going to take my Japanese brush and I'm taking my Anastasia contour kit using this color here. I'm going to start bronzing. I mean, oh my god, everything collapsed. I like this brush because of the point. See how it point, it's pointed like this? I love how it, that little point could really get into the contours of your face. So I'm just kind of bronzing myself up and warming up my my face. So now after I do the bronzer, I'm gonna take a powder, like another powder that's more of my skin tone, and I'm actually taking this. This is one of my favorite powders. It's from Milani. It is the multitasker face powder in number four light tan to kind of like brush off the bake I'm going to take my 180 brush from Mac an old-school brush they need to bring this brush back it's everything and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna like wipe off that um, translucent powder Now that the bake is gone, I'm just gonna kind of go in and kind of enhance the bronze. So now that I'm bronzed, I'm gonna pop on some brows real quick. I'm actually using this little brow palette that I got in an Ipsy or a BoxyCharm by The Brow Gal by Tanya Crooks. And I only use this color, I don't even use those two, but I use the dark brown color. I feel like once I have the brows on, it's totally gonna like frame this eye look together. It looks weird with I like, don't really have brows. It looks like overpowering. Ooh, see what I mean? It's like snatched. She looks pulled, honey, pulled. Look at the difference, what a brow does. Wait till I put on my lashes, that's really gonna make a difference. I 
I'm just kind of blending the edges to clean it up with a Q-tip. Q-tip should be like your best friend. For just to kind of add something as I was doing my makeup, I was like, you know what? I want to add a little something, a little punch, a little dimension into my eye look. What I'm going to do, I'm adding this color from, this is a palette that I made, but this color here from MAC, it's called Gorgeous Gold. Um, it's gold, but it looks green. It's like a green gold. I'm just going to tap it like right in the center of my eye. I think it's going to give it a little something, a little pop. Let's see. Oh yes, 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 yes. Okay, hold on, I'm getting all excited and stuff. Okay, so I'm taking my finger, I'm like literally kind of looking down in a mirror and I'm just popping it right up the center of my eye. See what it did? It just kind of gave it a little punch, a little something. So I'm going to take small 239 and I'm just going to concentrate it on the lashes and I kind of think of like a triangle or something like make it thicker and stronger at the base of the lash and kind of fade up into nothing. That's it. That is it. Yeah, and don't blend too much because I promise you that the longer this sits on your eyes it's all going to just kind of blend together. You don't want to blend it too much. You just want to place it and just let it go. Let it go. Ooh, there's something in my eyeball. Something in my eyeball. I'm going to take this brush from Crown. It's the C529 brush. And I'm going to go into this color here, Desert. I like this palette because you can really do a lot with it. You can like manipulate it. And use it as eyeshadows, as contours, bronzers. So I'm gonna do just lightly contour my nose right in that socket and just kind of bring right down the side of my nose. Just kind of sharpening those contours. Good way to see everything. See, when I lift my brows, you can see everything. And if it's whack, that means you need to go up in there and keep blending, girl. Okay? So if it looks blended and beautiful when you're doing this, you did a good job. That's a task when you do your eye makeup. Lift your brows like this. And if there's like patches and missing marks and all that stuff, girl, you need to go back up in there and keep on going. Now I'm put some mascara on. So I'm gonna, um, Curl my lashes using the Shiseido Eyelash Curler. And I have like the most Asian lashes. They're like super straight, super fine, and really short. So like I don't curl my lashes. I bend them at a 90 degree angle. And that's why I like the Shiseido. Lash curler because they cater to them Asians. They want those lashes bent, honey. It should be called a lash bender, honey. I'm gonna I'm gonna come out with something called the lash bender. See, so I like go up in there and I, I just do it, you know, at the root. Yeah. Just curling on lashes makes like, the biggest difference. It like opens up your entire eye. If you don't curl your lashes, you need to start curling your lashes because it makes the world of a difference. So I'm using a cheap ass mascara, but it's really good. It's by Essence. It's called the False Lashes Mascara. And this is so good and it's only $4.99. It's like kind of clumpy in a good way. Like if you like clumpiness to really volu like voluminize your lashes. Like with my lashes, I need anything. I need everything and anything a mascara can give. And I like it because look at the brush, it's like thin and it's pointy, so I can get up in to the root of my lash. Here, I wanna zoom in, because my microscopic lashes are like really hard to see. So, I like go up in to the root of my lash. This really amplifies um, any mascara, this trick. 
I actually learned this trick from a pro artist when I used to work at MAC. Her name was Bianca Alexander. And I loved her so much. I thought she was so pretty. She was like half Filipino, I think. And she had long curly hair. And I remember going to one of her master classes when I just started with MAC, like back in the day. And she showed, that's what, one of the tricks that she showed us. She was like, take that little, when you like pull out a mascara and that little booger that comes out, you see that? To use that booger <laughs> and put it right into the root of your lash, shimmy it through your lashes. And it's gonna look clumpy at first, but you just wanna like really get the product into your lashes and then go in and pull through. And you know what? I kind of want it to be clumpy because I'm wearing false lashes, so it doesn't really matter. I actually like a clumpier um, formula so that when I press my lashes together, it sticks to the falsies. For highlights, I'm going to do... I'm saving the lashes for the, for the end because they're like the pièce de résistance. Like they're... You know? I feel like lashes are my sexy... You know, it's like some people have liner or their foundation is their sexy. Like, it transforms them. For me, it's all about false lashes. I'm going to take this highlighter. This is a Pat McGrath highlighter. Um, the Fine Gold Number no. 3 Pigment Highlighter. Now, I was kind of shocked with this highlighter. I was expecting it to be, like, really dramatic. But it's actually kind of soft. And it's a lot yellower than you think. Like, it doesn't look yellow in the container. But then when you put it on, it, like, really picks up gold. So I'm taking a Trish McAvoy brush. I don't know what the number is. I've had it forever. But I love it because it's just perfect. It fits right in those little areas. To highlight. It's a good way to, like, Highlight your bow, your lip, and your chin. Like this. Up and down. Boom. Good to the nose. So my extra ass wants to put two highlighters on. So that's like my base highlight. Now I'm going to take my Gerard Cosmetics. The Marilyn. This guy here. And this one's a lot stronger. I'm just kind of touching the highest points. And you can go on the inner corner too. Such an old school trick. When in doubt, highlight the tear duct. It's so played out, but like it looks cute. You know what I mean? And then wait, just wait, just wait till I put the lashes on, okay? Just, just wait. So the lashes that I'm gonna be putting on are by Vegas Nay of Ilor in Grand Glamour. These are like a staple of mine. I have like a drawer full of these. Um, but they're really good, well-priced lashes. Look how it just transformed my... Boom! Yes! I live for lashes. Lash number two. The band on these lashes are really thick, so some of you might not like them because they do kind of poke. So I do the bottom after I put the lashes on. Bottom lashes make a big difference too. Ugh. Doesn't that just like give me like uh, sultry? It's like so so like uh, I'm sorry. Are you are you talking to me? Oh, I'm gonna do a little blush. So because everything in my face is kind of like dark and shiny and shimmery, I'm actually gonna like kind of off balance everything with like a really like pastel-y blush. I just want like a very soft flush. And it's matte too, so it's gonna cut through some of that shimmer. So like a good way that I like to put blush on, I like to do like little X's into a check mark. And I think it gives a really natural so I go X, 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 check. And I think it gives a really natural application. 
Why is it that I squint when I do my blush? I don't know. It's like, I'm like... I look so stupid when I do my makeup. A little bit. You know what? I lied. I want to put some shimmer on my on my blush because I'm extra. God, it's so hard for me to be basic. I don't know if they have this still at MAC, but this is like one of my favorite um, mineralized skin finish highlighters. It's called Stereo Rose, but it's like such a beautiful color. Like it's like a highlighter. So I'm very like soft. I'll just boom. Like that's it. Not highlights on top of highlights on top of highlights. I'm highlighted out, girl. Okay. So, the last part of this look is going to be lips. So for lips, I'm going to be taking a liner from Smashbox called Nude Medium. And I have like off-balanced lips. My, my mouth tilts. I hate my mouth sometimes. You know what's funny is that when I did this, when I decided to do this video, I knew I wanted it to be green. I just didn't know how. I wasn't gonna do it. So in the beginning of the video, I was a little nervous because I was like, what am I doing? I don't, I have like no idea what I was doing. I like totally winged it and it came out cute. I'm not sure if you know who Charlotte Tilbury is. She's like one of my favorite makeup artists and she's like totally my style in terms of like glam, Hollywood glam kind of looks. But when she does makeup, it's so funny. She always says, um, literally, literally this pencil is going to literally make you larger lips, literally. And she always says literally, and I love her, and she's so extra, and she doesn't even know it. Watch one of her tutorials. It looks like a hot mess, like three fourths all the way through the video. Like it just looks like she's just taking pencils and smudging it all over the model's eye and stuff. What the fuck is this bitch doing? Like, why is she like a famous makeup artist, you know? I know she's a good makeup artist because I've been following her for the past 10 years, but when you watch her do makeup, you're like, what is she doing? Like. She's smearing everything all over the model's face. It's like a countdown, like in the last 10 seconds of her tutorial, she like just pulls like these magic strings, like out of nowhere, she'll just like snatch it and like it will be like beautiful and gorgeous and the, and the makeup will come together somewhere in the end. That's a very like fashion show thing. That's how it is. She's just trying to get the color on the face and then she like refines it at the end. You're like, what the hell is going on? Does this bitch even know what she's doing? And then she like snatches it at the very last minute. You're like, okay, bitch. She did that. So the lip color that I'm using um, is from Milani. It's a metallic lip color called Amore Metallics Lip Cream in number one, Chromatic Addict. And I like these lip, these lip, um, liquid lipsticks, except they smell too sweet. They smell like icing. I feel like I'm literally putting icing all over my lip. Like, I don't think it smells cute. But look at that, boom. Isn't that dope? I love it. Look at how metallic that is. That's metallic. And these are from the drugstore. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh my god, I, this is so chrome. Let me bust out my lip liner, because this needs a lip liner. Look how glow. I just want to get a close up because in the monitor it looks like foil. I don't know. I can't explain. Look how metallic that is. That is some chrome shit right there. So I'm going to try to tone down that chrome with a little gloss. So I'm going to um, trade in some chrome for some gloss and I'm using a By Terry lip gloss. This is a really beautiful color called Gold Digger in number three. You know what? I don't even like putting it on with an app like with the applicator. I like to use my finger, so I because I want it to be like really glossy. Like, I love glossy lips. And when I, st when I started doing makeup, it was like in the early 2000s. And that's what all it was. It was like gloss galore. I used to sell the hell out of some old baby and chestnut. We used to sell like 50 of them a day. Each person. 
That was like the color in 2002. And I don't know if people still do this. Back in the day when I was working for MAC, we used to always put clear lip gloss on top of every other lip gloss. Always made it look even more extra, like super shiny. See, nothing beats MAC clear lip gloss. I'm sorry, there's no other lip gloss as shiny as MAC lip gloss. It's perfect, it's perfect. And the final step after everything is done is to make sure to set and spray down your face so everything melts together and looks a little bit more natural, whatever that means. Whew. Just let that dry down a little bit. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. This is the look. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a few things. Hopefully you can like utilize this or maybe, maybe wear a toned down version. For me, this is kind of like a lot. I would wear this like if I went out, if I went to the club, to church, to the grocery store, to the DMV, you know. Whatever you want to be real extra, pretty much. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a few things. If you have any questions, please let me know down below. And I hope you subscribe, like the video, make sure to hit the bell icon down below to get notified when new videos are posted. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye. My hair looks like Mariah Carey's in glitter. Remember when she was on stage and the one side was slicked back? She looked bald. It was so slick back. <laughs> I totally remembered where it was like this. And she was like saying like, Never too far away. Mm -mm. That's the bad thing about having lip gloss is that everything sticks to it. It's okay. It's cute though. I hate my thin ass hair. You got to do all types of tricks to make it look cute.